In this video, I will show you how to build a model evaporative cooling system with an Arduino. So pulling up this cardboard box to take a look at what we have here, there is an Arduino, a breadboard with a temperature sensor, a cooling fan mounted in one hole cut out of the side of the box, and a tray of water with an accordion folded piece of paper to act like fins to help the water evaporate. And how this system works is the temperature sensor will monitor the temperature and the Arduino is programmed such that when the temperature gets too hot, this fan will turn on. and It is going to suck fresh air in from the outside into the box, blow the air over the water, which is going to cause some of the water to evaporate. And as you probably know, when you get sweaty on a hot day, water evaporates from your skin and helps your body keep cool and the same concept applies here, that evaporating water absorbs heat from its surroundings and will actually cool the air inside the box. We then have a vent hole cut in the other side of the box to allow some of that air to escape. Just quickly demonstrating the behavior here, you could use something like a heat lamp to simulate heat from the sun heating up a building. I am just going to pinch the temperature sensor with my fingers to make it heat up. So right now you'll see that the fan is not moving, but when I pinch the sensor, my fingers are going to heat it up, and then again the Arduino is programmed to turn the fan on. So if the fan was still mounted in the box, it would be blowing air over the water. That cool air is then going to flow over the temperature sensor, and when the temperature sensor gets cold enough again, the fan is going to turn back off. So it is programmed to act just like a thermostat in your house when you have heat or air conditioning on. Again, you can see the fan turned off there because the temperature got low enough. You establish a set point. And for example, in the winter, if you have your heat on, when your house starts to get too cold, the heat is going to kick on, warm your house up. Then when it gets past the set point, it's going to turn off again, cool back down, and it'll be the opposite in the summer. You set a set point for your air conditioning. When it starts to get too hot, the air conditioning is going to kick on and cool your house down until it gets too cold, turn off, go back up, and keep the temperature close to that set point to maintain a comfortable indoor temperature. So this is an interesting application for a science project or experiment because there are a lot of things you can change to try and optimize this design to keep the temp temperature more stable or get the temperature as low as possible. So you can experiment with the placement of the fan and the vent holes in the box, the size and shape of the fins to help water evaporate. You could do an experiment comparing no water to just a tray of water to a tray of water with some fins or other porous surface to give more surface area to help evaporation. So there is a lot of material to do a cool science project here. You can find more information about that linked in the description of this video. In the rest of the video, I'm going to give a little more detail about the circuit itself and the code that makes this work. So zooming in on the breadboard here, we have a few key parts. First is a TMP36 temperature sensor. This is an analog temperature sensor that outputs an analog voltage that is linearly proportional to the temperature. This sensor has three connections. So if you look at the sensor, it has a flat side with some writing on it that is hard to see and then a rounded back side. So with the flat side facing you, the left pin is powered by the Arduino's 3.3 volt supply the middle pin goes to one of the Arduino's analog input pins, and the right pin goes to ground. Next over here, we have a transistor. This is an N-channel MOSFET. This is a part that helps you control a higher current external load, such as the DC cooling fan that I have off screen over here. That fan requires more current than you can get directly from an Arduino I.O. pin. So, if we look at the MOSFET, it also has three pins with the writing on the front facing you. The leftmost pin, called the gate, is the control pin that is connected to one of the Arduino's I.O. pins. The middle pin, called the drain, is connected to the negative wire from the fan. And then the rightmost pin, called the source, is connected to Arduino ground. This is a 5-volt fan, so the red or positive wire from the fan is then connected to 5 volts from the Arduino. We are going to switch over to the computer so you can see a slightly neater version of this wiring diagram. We also have longer, more detailed tutorials about both the temperature sensor and the cooling fan in our Arduino tutorial playlist linked in the description of this video. So again, the overview is going to be a little quicker here because we're talking about the entire application and using this for evaporative cooling, but we do have more detailed tutorials about each of these parts.
Switching over to the computer to take a more detailed look at the breadboard diagram and code, this is a free online simulation program called Tinkercad Circuits. We also have a tutorial video about this linked in our playlist in the description of, video, of this video. First, let's take a look at the breadboard diagram and then we will take a look at the code. The TMP36 temperature sensor, again, has three pins, and you will note here that they are all connected directly to the Arduino. They are not sharing breadboard rows or breadboard buses with the other parts. And this is because this sensor is particularly vulnerable to electrical noise that can cause errors in your temperature readings. So these direct connections to the Arduino do not eliminate, but can help reduce or minimize some of those effects. So we have one pin going to the 3.3 volt supply on the Arduino. That supply is usually a little cleaner or less noisy than the 5 volt supply. So again, we're trying to keep your temperature readings as stable and accurate as possible. We have the middle pin, which goes to one of the Arduino's analog input pins. And then we have the ground pin, which is going directly to one of the Arduino's ground pins. And again, not to one of the breadboard ground buses. Next up, we have the fan, which is represented by this DC motor in Tinkercad because Tinkercad does not have a fan part. So this wiring diagram is specific for a two wire, five volt DC fan. If you check out our fan tutorial video, I mentioned how there are other types of fans with three or four wires. But again, we're going to go into that in more detail in that video, not this one. So the fan has two connections. The positive wire goes to five volts from the Arduino. The negative wire goes to the middle or drain pin of the MOSFET. The MOSFET then has two more connections. The gate or control pin is going to go to one of the Arduino pins and the source pin is going to go to ground. So you can also find a parts list and just a static image for this diagram in the written instructions linked in the description of this video. Now looking at the code, we will go through this somewhat quickly line by line. We declare constants for the sensor pin and the fan pin. We then have a bunch of variables related to the temperature sensor. So first we have the analog to digital converter reading, which is going to be a number between zero and 1023. We convert that to volts, then millivolts, and then finally degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. So you can use whichever temperature system you prefer. We have a threshold variable that we are going to use as our set point for the thermostat to turn the fan on and off. And then we have a variable for the analog reference voltage. This is another thing I discuss in more detail in the tutorial video for the temperature sensor. The Arduino has an internal analog reference voltage of nominally 1.1 volts that is more stable than the five volt supply, which can fluctuate when you're doing other things like driving fans or LEDs. So that is going to help us get more stable temperature readings. In addition to having a variable for that here, we also use the command analog reference internal in our setup function to tell the Arduino that we're going to use that internal analog reference. We also set the fan pin as an output and initialize serial communication so we can print out our temperature values. In the loop function, we have code to read the temperature sensor and convert the readings to degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. Again, I'm not going to go over all of that in detail in this video. You can go check out the temperature sensor tutorial if you would like to see where these equations come from. And then we have the key part of this program where we are really making it behave like a thermostat. We have an if else statement where we compare our temperature reading. I am using degrees Fahrenheit because I'm based in the US, but you could use Celsius here instead to that threshold variable that we set. And if the temperature is greater than the threshold, then we use the digital write command to turn the fan on. Else, meaning it is lower than the threshold, then we use the digital write command to turn the fan off. So that is very simple on off thermostat behavior to use the fan in this case for cooling. If you purchased a fan that is listed as PWM compatible, PWM stands for pulse width modulation, then you could use the analog write command here to vary the fan speed instead of just turning the fan all the way on or all the way off. To do that, you need to make sure you select a PWM compatible pin on the Arduino. Those are the ones with the little squiggly line here. But again, we are assuming that you just have a non-PWM compatible fan and are doing full on-off control. 
We finally then have a bunch of serial print statements to print out oops, the various values for the temperature sensor. So if I start the simulation here and open up the serial monitor, you will see the initial ADC reading, which again is a number between zero and 1023, the voltage in volts, the voltage in millivolts, and then the temperatures in both degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. And the Tinkercad simulator, if I zoom out here, will let me click on the temperature sensor and drag a slider bar to simulate changing the temperature. So we see that right now I am below my threshold of 80 degrees Fahrenheit. If I click and drag that up a little bit, then once I exceed that threshold, the motor turns on. So with the physical setup, that would then be blowing cool air over the temperature sensor, which would cause the temperature to drop again. And once I drop back below that threshold, the motor turns off. So remember that you can get a full parts list, circuit diagram, and example code, and instructions for doing this as a science project, linked in the description of this video. For over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, not just Arduino, you can also check out the rest of our YouTube channel and visit our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.